Um, our next presenter is Professor Tara Alvarez from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Um, Tara uh, conducts neuroscience research that uh, could potentially help stroke victims recover their vision and could lead to a diagnosis of other uh, diseases, other visual diseases. Um, but she also uses uh, virtual reality in uh, vision therapy, uh, really fascinating uh, application of this technology and something that I, of course, am very interested in because virtual and augmented reality is what I am excited about. So I'm very happy to introduce to you today Professor Tara Alvarez. So my name is Tara. I'm also um, born and raised in New Jersey. I feel that Kristen and I are long lost cousins because I'm also a biomedical engineer. Um, one of the key things I love about biomedical engineering is the interdisciplinary research. It's a very wide field. And I actually learned about biomed when I was in fifth grade. Um, and from that, it was a career development assignment. So if you've had one of those, you never know that might be what you end up doing one day in life. Um, but as I was in high school, I started exploring lots of different areas. And some of the other areas I was interested in was medicine, specifically pediatrics, working with kids, um, as well as computer programming, and also physical and occupational therapy. So what I decided to do is blend them all together, and that's actually what I'm doing now about 30 years later. So this is a bunch of um, patents because one of the key things that um, the work that we're doing is if we really want to make an impact in people, one of the things I've learned is that although I'm trained actually here at Rutgers as a classical scientist, and then I went off um, and became the director of a laboratory, if I really wanted the things that we are doing to make an impact on people, Becoming an entrepreneur is a really key component of that. So we actually, um, some of my former students who are now the CEO and CTO, Chief Executive and Chief Technical Officer, we started our own company about a year ago and these are some of the patents we have. So what is the core problem that we're studying? So when I was in high school, similar to where you guys are, I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And that continued when I was an undergraduate as well as a graduate student. Um, so really think deeply as to what you want to do. And for me, that was making a difference in people's lives. My undergraduate degree is actually electrical engineering. So I was very interested in how the nervous system works. Specifically, I was interested in how we bring in visual information. And you might want to think about what it's like if you don't have good vision. So how many people um, work on computers or do any reading for homework? Probably everybody, okay? And how many people have ever um, done computer work for hours upon hours, okay? Does anybody get any visual fatigue and eye strain? Yes. Anybody get double and blurred vision? Yeah. Okay, now imagine that happening in just two minutes. And this is one of the key problems that people that have had concussion um, or have had a, been in a car accident or come back from war with a blast injury, these are some of the symptoms they experience within a few minutes. So for example, one of the things I'm showing in this video, which I probably, it's a little busy, but if everyone um, puts your fingers up on midline, so right in line with your nose, okay? If you stare at your back finger, what happens to the finger in front? You need two fingers up. Sorry, I've got them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if you do this, um, if you stare at the back finger and you look at your close finger, um, how many people see the near finger um, get blurry and double? Okay. Now imagine that while you're trying to read a book. And this is one of the key problems of um, patients that have what's called convergence insufficiency. So this is you being able to normally track something. And then this is what happens when you have this binocular dysfunction known as convergence insufficiency. Um, and I'll get into the uh, epidemiology or how many people have it, but this is also some um, guidance to show you what it would be like if you don't have good binocular vision. You might see double, things might go blurry, or you could also experiencing a halo effect. 
And then if you want to um, make an impact, it's important to know how many people are actually affected by different types of problems. So in the general population, about 5%, which is one out of 20 people, have convergence insufficiency. But what's even more interesting is if you've had a concussion and developed post-concussive syndrome, about half the people have this problem. How many people in the room like to play sports? Quite a few of you. Um, there is a possibility that from sports, it can lead to a concussion. I'm actually working with Dr. Arlene Goodman, who's with St. Peter's University Hospital right in this area. Um, I'm also working with Dr. Masters, and she is the director of concussion research at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And one of the things that I love about biomed is that it's this huge interdisciplinary um, teamwork. And another key thing you should know about me is that I'm incredibly stubborn. So if you have that trait in you, um, it's a very positive thing. Um, I don't give up easily um, if I believe in something. And this is a project that I strongly believe in. Um, one of the things I'm working on right now is I'm finishing up an NIH R01 project, which was a randomized clinical trial. It took me six rejections before I finally got it on the seventh try. Um, the big project I'm working on right now is called ICONIC, which is Interventions for Convergence Insufficiency in Children with Concussion. Um, we've now hit our seven-year mark of planning. It's about 50 clinicians across the U.S. We're working with Harvard um, Boston Children's, CHOP, Children's Hospital in Philadelphia, University of Alabama Children's, Stanford Children's, um, and University of Cincinnati Children's. So one of the really core things that I personally enjoy, and I think it really moves STEM forward, is when you work in these very large groups. And that's when you can really make a difference because you bring people from all different backgrounds. So one of the key things that we're doing with our company is we know that we have this therapy. It's called vision therapy. And how many people have know somebody or yourself have gone through some form of physical or occupational therapy? Anybody? What's one of the core principles in physical and occupational therapy? Anybody want to take a guess? It's repetitive motions over and over and over again. That's one of the core underlying ways in which we rehabilitate people. However, if you do anything over and over and over and over again, it's going to get boring, okay? So one of the challenges that we're trying to do is optometrists, which are your eye doctors, they administer and work with vision therapists to rehabilitate your visual system. And these techniques have been around since the 70s, and my Primary clinical collaborator, Dr. Scheinman, has shown that it's got about a 73% effectiveness rate. However, it gets quite boring. So one of the things that we are trying to do is to make this more fun and exciting. And we're going to be doing that through virtual reality gaming. Okay, so this is actually a picture of my daughter. What we do is we take some baseline measurements, okay? Then we're going to do virtual reality vision therapy. How many people like to play video games? Okay, so I have two kids and both of them easily play video games. If anything, I've got to get them to slow down a little bit. But in essence, what we're trying to do is take something that kids already like to do, which is gaming, and actually put the vision therapy into the game. So they don't even realize that they're being rehabilitated, they're just playing a game. And then we're going to repeat, this is Dr. Scheinman, um, our measurements and see how the after measurements compare to our baseline. So hopefully this works. This is an image of our game. What's a little bit different here is if anybody's played games at home, which I'm sure you've had, you usually have hand controllers. What we've done is we've thrown away the hand controllers and this entire game is actually controlled by your eye position. So what you're seeing here is if you notice the eyes, these little spots are actually um, the reflection, it's the bleed over of the infrared light, but we're actually tracking the eyes and the people, um, a child needs to follow this little glowing orb. And if you notice, it goes further into the two sides of the screen. So in order for you to track it, you have to cross your eyes. So you actually see the eyes converging or going inward. Some of the things we're doing next is we want to be able to have the game using machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, some of you in the room I know are interested in coding. We're actually kicking off our machine learning algorithm development this summer 
we want the game to be dynamic so it'll actually change depending on how that person's eye movements change. Oops, there we go. Now, if you're going to come up with something new, um, we actually have to make sure that it actually works. So these are clinical parameters, and what you'll see here is the baseline is in the light blue, and the post-vision reality, uh, virtual reality therapy is in the dark green. And normal is that green dotted line, where if, you're going, if it's below the dots um, or the arrows, that's normal, or if it's above the triangles, that's normal. So the first one is this thing called near point of convergence. That's how close you can see something without going double. And you want that number to be as low as possible, which normal is six centimeters. This one here is positive fusional range. That's like your range of motion. And you want that to be as wide as possible. You want to be able to see as much distance as possible. And the last one is a symptom survey, which is known as the convergence insufficiency symptom survey. So they start out very symptomatic, and their symptoms decrease after therapy. Oops. Okay. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you with you in terms of data is actually eye movements. So many of us don't think about why we move our eyes, but when you go from near to far, you um, see normal control data here. This is patient data um, before therapy and the same patients after. And one of the key takeaways, again, each of these lines is an eye movement going from far to near, and the color is the average. So you can see the patients take a very long time to do the movement, but afterwards, they're much closer to their controls, okay? So in conclusion, what we're doing is we're taking a problem, which is vision therapy works, but it's quite boring, and it's not very effective in the home setting because it's very boring, and we're gonna gamify our therapy um, so that it's fun. Now, if we do that, we want to make sure that it is actually effective as the traditional therapy. So that's the key thing that we're keeping me busy in the lab right now. Was there something that inspired you or made you want to make the video game for kids? I mean, therapy, I guess. So for, um, it's a great question. For. Um, as long as I can remember, I've wanted to make a difference in people's lives, okay? The gaming actually came out of us working with our computer science department. Within NJIT, we actually have in CompSci a game designing um, department. So as we were doing these, um, so my initial work about five years ago is actually studying how the brain changes as a result of that therapy. And I didn't bring any of that data with me. But one of the key things I know is that the brain is changing. However, if you don't do the therapy, just like if you can have the most miraculous drug, um, if you don't take it, it's not going to do anything because you're not doing it. So patient compliance, which is getting people to actually do the therapy is critical. And that's a core problem. Um, so as I was thinking, and I've got two kids, like I mentioned, um, they play games often, um, my son even more so. Um, so I was thinking, like, how can I get vision therapy to be more fun? And it was playing video games with my kids that I said, this might be a great medium to do it. But it's an excellent question. One last quick question. who has not yet asked a question? <laughs> okay, so very quick. I heard you mention the halo effect. Um, can you please explain what that is? So it's like the words floating on top. So if you think of like a halo across somebody's heads, um, so rather than doubling, which is going more horizontal, or blurring, um, haloing is as if the words are floating, okay? So it's, um, it's still um, a dysfunction, so you're not gonna be, the core thing in order to do any work at near, such as reading, is to see the text single and clear. Um, so halo is like floating on top. Good question.